Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the DAF Virtual Awards Ceremony, uh, the first of three online events happening as part of our Awards Week celebrations for participants and prize winners of the 2021 Grow It, Taste It, Don't Waste It Hermitage Schools Plant Science Competition. Uh, for the second year in a row, we've been unable to host our in-person uh, awards day at the Hermitage Research Facility in Warwick due to the ever-changing COVID-19 situation. So we are glad, uh, delighted, I should say, uh, you could join us for our virtual session today. Uh, please make sure that you join in tomorrow's Quest Again webinar too, as you can see here on your screen. Uh, where you'll learn how you can play to protect our environment with the Pest Invaders BioQuest and tune in on Thursday for the explosive Street Science Future of Food show, where you'll be amazed as your presenter shows you how to launch flying potatoes, use mushroom spores to create fireballs, and plate up some future foods designed in the lab. Um, we'd like to say a huge thank you to the Competition Gold sponsors, the Queensland Government, the Plant Biosecurity Science Foundation and the Grain Research and Development Corporation, along with our silver sponsors, the Paul Johnston Memorial Trust, the Crawford Fund and the University of Queensland, plus our bronze sponsors, and I know John and Chris Purdy are with us today for their tremendous support that has enabled us to run the competition this year. Uh, award uh, and award a range of prizes, fabulous prizes to students and deliver the virtual awards week. Now we'll get started, uh, well, we'll start today's session with a pre-recorded video, including messages from the Minister of Agricultural Industry Development and Fisheries and Minister for Rural Communities, Mark Ferner MP, and Deputy Director General of the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries, Bernadette Ditchfield, plus the announcement of prize winners by competition coordinator, Kerry Ruby. We'll then go live to our guest presenter for an inspiring presentation from the Director of the University of Queensland's Centre for Horticultural Science, Professor Nina Mitter, and we'll conclude with a short Q&A session where you can ask Professor Mitter any question that you like about science and agriculture. Now, just as a general note for the teachers that are listening to us today, if you could please take some photos of um, the students during today's session. Uh, Kerry has asked me that if you could take some photos, that would be wonderful, and you could send them to her after today's session, then she can pop them up on social media. Okay. So please sit back and enjoy the show. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the Gitabal land where the Hermitage Research Facility stands. I pay my respects to the Gitabal elders, past, 
present and emerging. While it's disappointing that we are again holding this event online, it's fortunate that we have the technology to gather virtually and celebrate the work of our future scientists. I am optimistic that next year we will be well and truly on top of the COVID-19 pandemic and it will be safer for us to gather in person again. I look forward to 2022 being an extra special awards ceremony as part of a year-long celebration of the 125th anniversary of the Hermitage Research Facility. I'd like to extend a warm virtual welcome to all of you this occasion is a wonderful celebration of students' achievements in the 2021 Hermitage Schools Plant Science Competition. It's the 25th year of the competition and the facility has a long history, not only with the schools comp, but working with local producers on all manner of research to help Queensland's food sector to thrive. We are sincerely grateful for these ongoing partnerships. It's thanks to those long-term relationships that the facility will be celebrating its 125th year anniversary next year. And the, the team is excited about running all sorts of events and activities to celebrate. As I'm sure you all know, 2021 is the International Year of Fruit and Vegetables, which led to the theme of the competition this year. Grow it, taste it, don't waste it, 130 schools and around 3,600 students from across the country participated in the competition this year. In doing so, they have learned more about the important role of fruits and vegetables in human nutrition, food security, health, sustainable food production through innovation and technology, and the reduction of food loss and waste. The work that has gone into the entries across all the categories is truly impressive and I commend you all for your effort and commitment. I'm passionate about the future of Queensland's agriculture and it's important to me that the department continues to encourage the next generation of scientists and agriculturalists. Young people like all of you students here today are the key to working towards our vision of making Queensland a world leading uh, provider of high quality, safe and sustainably uh, produced food and fibre. You'll hear from DDG Bernadette Ditchfield shortly. She will talk to you in more detail about some of the projects we are working on at Hermitage and across the department. Enjoy today everyone. Look forward to returning to Warwick and the Hermitage facility in the not too distant future. Good morning to you all. I'm so pleased that we can still come together, albeit virtually, to acknowledge and celebrate the achievements of everyone involved in this long running event. Of course, it would be better if we could meet in person, but at such an uncertain time, the safety of everyone must be our top priority. There are many students, teachers, parents, sponsors, staff and supporters who have made this competition and event possible. I know there is considerable effort that goes into the competition every year for teachers and students to coordinate entries and for our organisers and sponsors to make it all happen. So it's fantastic to connect with each of you today to celebrate everyone's hard work. The Hermitage Schools Plant Science Competition is particularly special for DAF because it's one of the ways that we nurture our future scientists and agriculturalists around the country. We believe that helping you find ways to foster your passion for this work is critical for the future of agriculture and food in Australia. You probably already know that this event was originally scheduled during National Science Week. This year, the school's theme for the week was Food Different by Design, which of course ties in with the UN's International Year of Fruit and Vegetables and is what inspired the focus for the Hermitage Schools competition. I'm sure this year's theme of Grow It Taste it, don't waste it, has given you valuable insight about the important role fruit and vegetables play in our health and nutrition, food security, sustainable food production, and how we tackle global issues like reducing food waste. 
The planned science projects that some of you did for the competition are just the sort of things we research at DAF. We work with growers and other research organisations to explore how they can adapt their practices and thrive in a changing environment. We have teams researching new varieties of vegetables, fruits, grains and legumes that grow well in the harsh Australian climate and look and taste amazing when they get to your table at home. Some of our research is finding ways to manage crops so that they come more resilient and produce more at harvest time. We are also working to understand how we can better control insects and other pests to protect our food crops without damaging the environment they grow in. Our researchers are even exploring plant proteins from grains and legumes to target the growing market for plant-based diets. Food waste is another big issue around the world. Oz Harvest says that one third of all food produced and almost half of all fruit and vegetables is lost or wasted. This amounts to around 1.3 billion tonnes of food, costing the global economy close to $940 billion each year. DAF's agri-food teams are exploring ways to help reduce food waste, which is also a highly effective way to address climate change. Helping our farmers deal with climate change and the devastating impacts of drought is very important to us. We are working with our producers to explore new strategies and practices to help our agricultural industry survive these extreme weather events to ensure food security for future generations. There is a great deal of research being done in this space. These are just a few of other things that people have been working on. Hopefully the work that you did on your entries for the competition has helped you learn a little bit more about some of the big issues affecting people around the world. Normally when we hold this event in person, there are lots of displays and research presenters which feature our research. This is one of the disadvantages of an online event. But if you do have any questions about what our researchers do, you can pop them in the chat box and one of our staff can answer it for you online here today or follow up with an email later on. Before I wrap up, I would like to congratulate the award winners who will be announced shortly. I'd also like to acknowledge and sincerely thank competition organisers, particularly Mrs Kerry Ruby, her committee and all the staff involved for their efforts. I'd also like to thank you, the teachers, students and families and competition sponsors for your continuing support. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the rest of this online event.
Minister Ferner for your warm welcome to the 2021 Virtual Awards Ceremony. And thanks also to our Deputy Director General, Bernadette Ditchfield, for your kind words and for explaining too how this year's fruit and vegetable themed competition is very relevant to current plant science and food research being undertaken by DAF staff. Who knows, some of the award winners I'm about to announce may become our future agricultural scientists, helping to solve global issues like food wastage and food security for our growing population. So without further ado, I will now announce the various individual and class prize winners of the 2021 competition. The Paul Johnston Memorial Senior Science Award winner is Michelle Springerlow from the Groves Christian College of Distance Education. And the runner-up is Kaya Daly from the Centenary Heights State High School. The conference award winners are Jeslyn Federico from Chinchilla Christian College, Jessica Quanico from the Chinchilla Christian College, and Adrian Coleman from the Glasshouse Christian College. The UQ Feast Scholarship Award winners are Cameron Colless from Atherton State High School, Adrian Coleman from the Glasshouse Christian College, and Dana Linton from Home Hill State High School. The Crawford Fund International Agricultural Science Award winners for years 10 to 12 is Michelle Springerlow. The runners-up are Team Liveru, Satar and Yeren, and also Team Mali, Cassandra and Catherine from Centenary Heights State High School. The winner for the year 7 to 9 category is Thomas Johnson from the Faith Christian School of Distance Education. And the runner-up is Ruby Linton from Home Hill State High School. The winner for the Year 3 to 6 category is Year 3-4 from Rockhampton Grammar School. And the winner for the Year Prep to 2 category is Year P to 1 for Pilton State School. The QUT Most Outstanding Poster Award winner is Ebony King from the Glasshouse Christian College. And the highly commended award winners are Shurik Shana Acharya from Centenary Heights State High School and Michelle Springerlow from the Groves Christian College of Distance Education. The Ag Institute of Australia Junior Science Achievement Award winner is Thomas Johnson from the Faith Christian School of Distance Education and the runner-up is Tessa Prochon from the Faith Christian School of Distance Education. The Joe Baker Outstanding Achievement Award winner for years three to six is May Turkington from Pilton State School. And for years prep to two, it's Jesse Campbell from Pilton State School. The John and Chris Purdy Young Science Investigator Award winner is Scarlett King from Cecil Plain State School. The highly commended award winners are Surik Shana Acharya from Centenary Heights State High School. Brianna Martin from Centenary Heights State High School. Liveru Wanira Chichi from Centenary Heights State High School. Ebony King from the Glasshouse Christian College. Jeselyn Federico from the Chinchilla Christian College. Jessica Kuanico from Chinchilla Christian College. Josh Biddle from Narangba Valley State High School. Michael White from the Narangba Valley State High School. Nash Newman from, from the Narangba Valley State High School. Kira West from Pimlico State High School. Yasmin Brockhurst from Brigadine College, Indrapilly. 
Piper Cox from Pilton State School, Rachel May from Pilton State School, Liam Brockhurst from St Joseph's Primary School, Annabelle Horn from the Faith Christian School of Distance Education, Stevie Lee Tribe from Cecil Plains State School, Agnes from Minimbar State School, and Hayley Johnson from Pilton State School. The overall class first prize for years 10 to 12 is Year 10 Centenary Heights State High School. For Year 7 to 9 is Year 7 Highfield State Secondary College. For Years 3 to 6 is the Year 3-4 class from Rockhampton Grammar School. And for Years Prep to 2 is the Years Prep to 1 class from Pilton State School. The overall class second prize award winners for years 10 to 12 is years 10 to 12 from the Glasshouse Christian College. Years 7 to 9, it's year 7, Bowen State High School. For years 3 to 6 is the year 3 to 6 class from Pilton State School. And for the years prep to 2 category, it's the year P to 3 class from Cecil Plains State School. The overall class third prize winner for years 10 to 12 is year 10, Chinchilla Christian College. For years 7 to 9 is year 9 from Fairhome College. For years 3 to 6 category, it's the year 5 class from Mariba State School. And for the year prep to 2 category, it's the year 2 class from Minimbar State School. The Encouragement Award winners are Cameron Collis from Atherton State High School, the Year 10 class from St Gregory's College, the Year 10 class from Mariba State High School, Farron White from Home Hill State High School, The Years 3 to 6 class from Cambuya State School. And Madison from Minimbar State School. The Art in Agriculture Most Outstanding School winner is Pilton State School. The runner up is Home Hill State High School. The year prep winner is Hayley Johnson from Pilton State School. And highly commended is Zachary Cobbin from Pilton State School. The year one winner is Jesse Campbell from Pilton State School. And highly commended is Millie Thorpe from Pilton State School. The Year 3 winner is Flynn McGuinness from Pilton State School. And highly commended is Olivia Brady from Pilton State School. And Liam Brockhurst from St Joseph's Primary School. The Year 5 winner is Riley Sipple from Pilton State School. And highly commended is Rachel May from Pilton State School. The Year 6 winner is Madhava Sternbeck from Pilton State School. And highly commended is Thomas Horn from the Faith Christian School of Distance Education. Highly commended goes to May Turkington from Pilton State School. And Year 7 winner is Yasmin Brockhurst from Brigadine College in Drupilli. The Year 8 winner is Ashton Allen from Trinity Bay State High School. 
and highly commended is Addison McDonald from Home Hill State High School. And also Emily Bojack from Home Hill State High School. The Year 9 winner is Savannah Finn from Home Hill State High School. And highly commended is a student from Trinity Bay State High School. The Year 11 winner is Michelle Springerlow from the Groves Christian College of Distance Education. The Questa Game Pest Invaders BioQuest overall champion and most valuable player first place is Animalia. Most valuable player second place is Eskel from Merry Creek Primary School. Most valuable player third place is Lachlan H from Frederick Irwin HH. Champion spotter first place is Alastair from the Study Anywhere team. Champion spotter second place is Eskel from Merry Creek Primary School. Champion spotter third place is I Like Trains from Coffs Harbour CCS Blue Team. The champion identifier first place is Alastair from the Study Anywhere team. The champion identifier second place is Animalia from the John Forrest Secondary College Bush Arranger Cadets. The champion identifier third place is Campfire Snake from Coffs Harbour CCS Green Team. The best scoring find first place is Campfire Snake from Coffs Harbour CCS Green. Best scoring find second place is Eskel from Merry Creek Primary School. Best scoring find third place is DJ's Wart from Coffs Harbour CCS Green Team. The Active Adventurer Prize Draw winner goes to Agent C Noodles from Coffs Harbour CCS Blue Team. The Most Valuable Team first place is Coffs Harbour CCS Green. The Most Valuable Team second place is Coffs Harbour CCS Blue. And the Most Valuable Team third place is Forsyth County Sharon Forks Library all the way from the USA. The champion spotters team first place is the study anywhere team. The champion spotters team second place is Coffs Harbour CCS Green. And the champion spotters team third place is Coffs Harbour CCS Blue. The champion identifiers team first place is the study anywhere team. The champion identifiers team second place is Coffs Harbour CCS Green. And the champion identifiers team third place is Coffs Harbour CCS Blue. Well, that now concludes the awards announcements for the 2021 competition. Many thanks and a huge congratulations goes out to all of the Grow It, Taste It, Don't Waste It competition participants, plus their teachers and parents. Thanks for supporting your students to complete this massive project during semester one. I would also like to acknowledge our wonderful sponsors who make the competition possible each year and allow us to offer such a tremendous range of fantastic prizes. The 2021 Gold Sponsors are the Queensland Government Department of Agriculture and Fisheries, the Plant Biosecurity Science Foundation, and the Grains Research Development Corporation. And our silver sponsors are the Paul Johnston Memorial Trust, the Crawford Fund, and the University of Queensland. We hope to see you all back again next year as we celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Hermitage Schools Plant Science Competition and the 125th anniversary of the Hermitage Research Facility. And hopefully we can put on another great in-person awards day during National Science Week next August. I'll hand back over to Greg now so he can introduce our guest speaker for today's webinar, Professor Nina Mitter, Nina Mitter from, the from the University of, University of Queensland. Queensland. Bye, for now. Bye for now. Okay, wow, how was that? That was just amazing. And congratulations to all the 2021 award winners and everyone who participated in this year's School Plant Science Competition. 
Now, just quickly, I'll just do another quick piece of housekeeping. Uh, so just before we go to our live guest presenter, Professor Nina Mitter, I'd quickly like to demonstrate uh, just how to use the question function in the webinar platform that we're using today. You can pop your questions into the question panel that you see on your little floating control panel. Uh, and you can do so at any time during uh, Professor Mitter's presentation. So as soon as you have a question, just type it in and put it in. And when we get to our Q&A session, we'll do our very best to get through as many questions as we possibly can. Now, just to give you a bit of an insight as to who we have with us today. So um, from our registrations, we had over 18 schools throughout um, Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia and WA. So welcome to all of you. Uh, we also have many of our competition sponsors. So we're joined by the Queensland Government, uh, the Plant Biosecurity Science Foundation, the Grains Research and Development Corporation, the Crawford Fund, University of Queensland, the Ag Institute of Australia, and as I mentioned earlier today, we also have John and Chris Purdy with us as well. And other organisations that are joining us include AgForce, Science Teachers Association of Queensland, and the Health and Wellbeing uh, of Queensland. So uh, it's almost time for Professor Mita to join us live. So I'll just quickly play a little introductory video that showcases some of the great work being done by the staff at the University of Queensland's, uh, Queensland's Alliance for Agriculture and Food Innovation, or COFI, as we commonly call it. Uh, for those who may not know about COFI, it is a research, research institute at the University of Queensland, supported by the Queensland Government via the Queensland Department of Agriculture and Fisheries. Food is the fuel that drives our lives and our health. Every day we eat, and everything that we eat is grown somewhere. Queensland has a strong track record in producing quality, clean and green food from challenging tropical and subtropical environments. Helping drive innovation and growth in this sector is the Queensland Alliance for Agriculture and Food Innovation, or COFI. Conceived in 2010 as a joint initiative between the Queensland Government and the University of Queensland, COFI has created a large critical mass of outstanding scientists working to improve agriculture and food industries in Queensland and globally. We apply cutting-edge technologies to meet the global challenges and the potential of agriculture and food production in the tropics and subtropics. We translate fundamental science to applications and industries and harness information technology, nanotechnology and biotechnology for sustainable agriculture and food production. Our science spans the food supply chain from paddock to plate. Coffee and UQ attract the best people to study and collaborate with us. Together with our government, industry and our research collaborators, Coffee is helping meet current and future demand for safe, sustainable and nutritious food. reigns over to our guest presenter and today's uh, presenter is uh, Professor Nina Mita and uh, Nina is from Coffee. Thank you so much Greg and thank you for this really wonderful opportunity you know what an inspiring initiative uh, Hamita School's plant science competition. Uh, before I begin my talk congratulations to all the winners uh, it was really inspiring to see young ones from PrEP to Year 12 on the screens. And my congratulations to the proud parents and teachers as well who have brought this all together. And special thanks to you, Greg, Kerry, and Susan for giving me this chance, and also to Barbara Tigeli and the Hermitage team of Coffee. So thank you very much. And now, before I begin my talk, I would like to pay my respects and I acknowledge the traditional owners and their custodianship on the lands which we meet, the Turubul and the Yagera people, the land from where I am talking, and the Gidabal land people as well. 
I would like to pay my respect to their ancestors and descendants who continue cultural and spiritual connections to the country. And I personally especially recognize their valuable contributions to Australian and global society. What it made me do when I got, the, got this invite for this talk and I read a little bit about uh, you know, the Hermitage, this competition was to think about uh, my past as well a little bit. And it really took me back down the memory lane as to where I started in my career and where I am today. And would like to uh, you to indulge me a little bit as I tell you a little bit about my story and then come, of course, we want to grow it, we want to taste it, and we don't want to waste our food. And my story actually is about the journey, realizing the value of food. So here is my grandfather, and he used to work in railways. And I'm not sure if you know the little bit about the history of India. We had British Raj, or British were our rulers for, certain, for a long period of time. And in 1947, India gained independence. Now, at that time, my granddad was weaver in Lahore, which is a part of Pakistan. Of course, I wasn't born at that time. But this is the time when the India-Pakistan partition happened. And it was not a nice time. So my grandfather, who used to work in railways, actually escaped in a train and from Lahore and landed in Delhi as a refugee. And this is where then he started making his life again. So basically it was starting from scratch in Delhi, which is Delhi at that time, and millions of people as refugees in Delhi just to start that career again. And he is the person who um, I owe my inspiration for agriculture. I grew up as part of this large extended family. And here is, this is me, as you can see, and I put this picture there so that you can see, you know, the short hem lines, which were in fashion even in the 1960s. Um, so my grandfather actually told me about the importance of agriculture and how important it is socially, environmentally, economically, politically. It, it almost, you know, embraces all aspects of our lives. And what he ingrained in me right from early stage was the value of food. We were not allowed to waste even a grain of food in our plate because he was absolutely telling us we are really privileged that we are getting three square meals in a day. He also told me how much we need to do to help our farmers, because from him, I used to hear stories that an Indian farmer is born in debt and dies in debt. And it used to be really perplexing for me. How can someone who is producing food for the world and is feeding all of us actually may not have food for his own family? So this is what led me to take a career in agriculture. Um, I defied the norms when, you know, when I went, when I finished my school, um, most of the time I used to get, okay, are you going to be a doctor or are you going to be a teacher? That was like sort of the trajectory for the girls at that time. And I said, no, I'm going to do agriculture. And this is my class of 1982 when I did botany honors, like I studied about plants at Delhi University. And once again, why I have put this picture here is I am also passionate about gender diversity and equality and cultural diversity. And I'm very proud to say that even in 1982, this class of 1982 had 16 girls and 16 boys. So it was a beautiful experience doing that graduation. And of course, as I said, I was decided that I'll be doing my master's in agriculture and I'll be doing my PhD in agriculture because that's where I wanted to land. And I did do my PhD. And of course, one thing that I was also passionate about at that time was my work or my research has to make a difference on the ground. I would be very happy if I can do something that can make that life of the farmer easier or grow the crops better. And very proud to say that um, in 1984, actually, I received an award from the Prime Minister of India. So I was the young scientist at that time. And I received that award for breeding chickpea varieties, you know, in the pulse that you eat, the black drum. 
uh, to make it disease resistant. And then I took up a position or a job at um, an institute in Delhi. And I have a defining moment to tell you about my career at that time. At that time, when you started a job in India, it was mandatory for us to go and stay in a village for six months and be adopted by a farmer's family. So we really had to go and work in the farm, stay with them, understand their problems, and then come back to the research lab to start our job after PhD. So yes, Dr. Nina Mitter was very excited to be adopted by this uh, by a family. Um, and I still remember the very last day of training, and I'm telling this very wise old farmer, oh, biotechnology and science can solve all the problems in the world for you, you know, we, we can do wonders and that's what I'm going to do. And I still remember his words. He patted me on my shoulder and said, daughter, if you can give me a handful of good seeds, I can do the rest. And honestly, that has remained my mantra in life as I have progressed in my career to be able to give that good seeds to that farmer so that he can grow the crops better or he can protect his crops better. And of course, these two pictures at the bottom, India has changed beautiful, you know, from village to cosmos, the Indian girls are on the move and so are the girls everywhere across the world. I'm so, yeah, I do, I'm passionate about young women and especially young women in STEM. So I started working in India and then I moved to Australia about after serving for about 10 years. And my motivation to move to Australia was, I really wanted an opportunity to address global challenges. I really wanted to work on, get the opportunities to work in bigger teams, to deliver something really meaningful, as I said, on the ground. Uh, and at that time, India is wonderful now. The science labs are amazing and at par with anywhere else in the world. At that time, there were certain constraints when I was doing my job. So this is when I landed at the University of Queensland to start my career, and I really took a big risk. I, was, I had worked already for 10 years in India. I was at a senior scientist position there, and I was when I gave my job interview here for the University of Queensland, I was told I have to start, you know, it is an entry-level position. And I said, game on, that's all right. I will build my career from there and see how it goes. And that's how I landed at the University of Queensland. And very proud to say that this journey has now made me uh, become the director for the Center for Horticultural Science. Very equally more proud that I'm the maybe the first colored women founder director of the center at Coffee. So very pleased about that as well. And I have this journey has led to very proud moments. You've heard Mark Ferner today. So he's excited by some of the research that we do as well at the Queensland Alliance for Agriculture and Food Innovation. And let me now take you to, to talk about more on the science now, especially uh, about food and nutritional security, as we have been hearing today, 10 billion people by 2050. And it's sad, it's not just about uh, the future or 10 billion people, it's about today, it's about tomorrow, it's about the next season and the year after. And the World Food Prime Program reports that 66 million primary school age children in developing countries go to class hungry. Now the theme is food waste, so I thought I might just put a little video on food waste and it's, you know, Bernadette also talked about it, annual household food waste in Australia actually has reached $10.3 billion in 2020. It is just, just not nice and we need to do something. So here is a little bit of a video that I found um, as we find in our Google friend and hope just gives you a perspective on food waste. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now, one of the ways where I am involved in tackling this issue of food waste is managing food loss. Now, we can lose food due to pests and diseases as well, due to insect pests and fungi and viruses. They can all attack our plants. And as you can see, they can really cause huge damage. And we do need to, we can um, prevent food loss if we can manage these pests and diseases. And we do that by using pesticides or fungicides or insecticides, but it is not an easy thing to do. It is a very uh, difficult field to develop new pesticides. And we do lose, even when we use these pesticides, we do lose uh, crop yields due to pests and diseases. And not only that, we have issues with pest use of pests and diseases. Um, you know, pest, the insects are pests are very clever. They can become resistant to it. We have issues of runoff to our precious waterways. We don't want to harm our beautiful monarch butterflies and honeybees. So we really need safe products. And you can see here straggling stats of insecticides being used in US, uh, 228 28 fully loaded jumbo jets. And then these things happen as well. So this is in 2013, you know, 25 Indian children died after consuming a community meal that had toxic pesticides. So this was my inspiration. And I'm going to talk very briefly on two of my innovations. And this is one is called BioClay. And I know now we know all about Moderna and Pfizer and RNA vaccines. I started this work in about 2011 and 12 on RNA vaccines for plants. And this is using the RNA the same way we are using for vaccination. Now I'm using the RNA for pests and pathogens using clay particles as carriers and that is why it is called bioclay to protect plants from pests and diseases so that there's no issue of runoff and we are fine and yes it does work here you can see um these are the capsicum plants which have been sprayed with this bioclay these are zucchini plants which have been sprayed and we can kill white flies as well so by spraying this really safe alternative to chemical pesticides we can control pests and diseases and um recently the federal government the australian research council has actually given us a hub that we have formed with multiple partners industry partners international players to look at fungal diseases you know how can we prevent um, our strawberries from getting moldy our grapes from getting moldy or our cotton uh, plants from getting fungal infections and this work is now progressing uh, endless possibilities um, uh, students with this platform i'm very excited that we are not only looking at viruses and insects and fungi we started with we are also looking at animal health with this safe issue so rna of the pest or the pathogen is used to kill the pathogen itself so it's almost like nature versus nature so if you would like to know more about bioclay very happy for you to email me and i'll be happy to send you some more information and it's, it is proud, very proud, Queensland owned and Queensland invented innovation aimed at contributing to the Australian economy and the super market trolley. And very key message is we really need to care, take care of our planet. And that's the basis for it. Uh, the other very brief thing, because it was, you know, grow it and taste it. And who can deny it? the yummy fruit, avocado, the super fruit? It's almost the world's trendiest food, uh, the most um, pinned fruit or tr on Instagram. And we have signs like no cash or avocados kept on this premises and our wonderful green and gold campaign for avocado. Now, what we have done in our lab is that we realized that there is an issue of plant supply of avocados, not just fruit supply, but avocado trees when growers want to put those trees in the ground. 
And what we have developed is we can get a single cutting of a avocado tree, bring it into the lab, remind each and every cell in that cutting to grow into a plant. And can you imagine, we can get 500 avocado plants from a single cutting. So in my lab, there are 20,000 avocado trees in just a 10 square meter room. And this method is seed free, soil free, pesticide free, water and space efficient. So once again, showcasing Queensland as the leader in innovation. And we have taken this technology from lab to field, as you can see, happy, happy team members, really not just doing the lab work, but harvesting the fruits of their labor, the wonderful avocado fruits, along with industry partners. And I got a bit of a prominence as well. Guess what? Some people tweeted that maybe this avocado car belongs to Nina Mitter at Coffee. I wish I could really own it. Uh, once again, as I said, for me, this team spirit is absolutely important. Collaboration and partnerships is the key motto of our team, as well as unity in diversity. So you can see some of those happy pictures here. At the Center for Horticultural Science, we are not just working, as I said, these are bioclay and avocados, some of my work, but we are working on macadamias, we are working on bananas, we are working in uh, the space of modeling and digital horticulture. We are also looking at how to protect crops from our pests and diseases and innovations. And not just this horticultural science, at some of the time, I will, would love to tell you what all coffee does and what its other wonderful centers because we all are integrated in delivering these outcomes. This is just, just one slide that I thought I'll show you about the DigiHort or the digital twin concept. Once again, simple things of modeling and how they can help. And here you can see if the plants are grown in a certain way when they are being sprayed uh, with the chemicals, um, this most of the plants are getting the spray in one side whereas on the other side if the growing the uh, orchard is not grown properly then most of those particles are falling down so these are some of the cool and exciting things we do that help us in moving forward i'm um, also launched actually a big initiative on growing plants indoors or controlled environment cropping um, you know, we, we take it for granted that we have lots of sunshine and land and we don't need to worry about, but we really need to produce more from less. Um, the pictures, uh, other four pictures actually speak volumes. I really don't need words for that. You know, the bushfires, the cyclones, the drought, the population and the pandemic, which has affected our supply chains and agriculture. So I, I'm very keen to explore new ways of growing crops where maybe one hectare can give us the yield worth of 10 hectares or more. I like to end a little bit by showing this last slide here. Um, this is special memories on the left hand side. This is my first PhD student in India. And I, I always feel honored to have her as my PhD student. She had a disability um, in walking and halfway through the PhD, um, she said, look, Nina, am I doing the right thing to be in the field of agriculture? And really, honestly, I was more, even more nervous than her because I was, she was my first PhD student. But we stuck together. She completed her PhD. And guess what? She became the professor and head of plant pathology at a university in India, even before I became a professor at the University of Queensland. So really, really proud of her. And guess what? The journey continues. These are two of my recent PhD graduates. Uh, really happy once again, as you can see, and I'm very proud of where they are in life now. One of them is still working with me as a postdoc and another joined and um, went to our FAO for a training and is now working in China. So yes, I uh, would love to inspire young minds because that is where, if we have you, you all inspired, to do something for the planet, to grow it, taste it, and don't waste it, we can definitely say hello tomorrow to the changing face of horticulture. Thank you very much. And Greg, happy to take any questions. At All right, step. okay. Okay, thank you, Nina. Wonderful presentation. And everyone, now it's over to you. I will just um, bring back my presentation 
just to put it that there so you can see um, you can see how to put your questions into the question panel. I am very conscious of time. It is coming up to close to two o'clock and we do have an opportunity for a couple of questions. Um, so yeah, our first question that has come in, Nina, is that I was just wondering, does our food contribute to food waste statistics or is that based just on landfill data? If not, then perhaps food waste is even more prolific than we think. Yes, so there is there is a lot of um, data being made available, and yes, one of the stats comes from the landfill, but there are other stats being developed as well. And a very good question because we really need to take it into all aspects of food waste. So the data that is currently being generated is being generated from different spectrum as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, and don't forget um, to the teachers out there, if the, if the children have some questions, please type it into the question panel and we I'd be more than happy to um, read it out to, to get Nina's response. Uh, next question, Nina, is can you please tell us when bioclay will be available? Okay. And, and, it, and, and mm -hmm. is it safe? Yeah. Um, so in terms of safe, um, yes, as I said, this uh, clay is absolutely degradable. Um, you cannot even see when the plants are sprayed. It is just magnesium and iron, so it's almost like a nutrition to plants. Uh, and RNA of those pests and pathogens are already present in those infected plants. So it's not nothing, you know, uh, as in terms of safety, yes. Uh, when it will be available? Uh, we are working very closely with industry partners, but there is a pipeline of, you know, registrations and regulation and product development to go through. Um, fingers crossed, three to five years, maybe. Thank you. Okay, that'd be wonderful. It's very smart technology indeed. And uh, it has clocked over to two o'clock, but I'll just squeeze one more question in. So, and that question is, what is the one message that you would like to give the young minds listening to your talk today? Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, dream more, you know, just, just dream uh, for making this planet a wonderful planet and you can do it. So dream more, do more, inspire more, collaborate more, question more, and have that passion and resilience to take care of your planet. You can do it. Very wise words. And thank you, Nina, for your presentation this afternoon. And thank you very much for everyone attending today's virtual award ceremony. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed the session. You'd learnt a few things and were inspired by the wonderful presentation that Nina has just given you. Uh, this webinar has been recorded and uh, a link will be, for, to, will be provided to all the attendees so that you can view uh, the content again at any time and at your convenience. We hope to see you all back next year when we are, are ready to take on a new Agricultural Science Challenge for the 2022 DAF Hermitage Plant Science Competition. So that's it for now. Uh, thanks again to everyone and it's goodbye for now.